Pequod is a suggestive pattern designed by North Dakota fly fisher Mark Olinger. This fly does an excellent job representing prey such as scuds and forage fish. Due to its unique merger of materials, it also just looks good to eat. If you're exploring a new lake, this is a great pattern to begin with. Here are the materials you will need to tie your own selection of Pequods. Let me show you how I tie the Pequod. A fly originated by North Dakota native Mark Olinger. It's a great little pattern that suggests many food sources and if you ever visit the southwest region of Manitoba and its productive trout lakes there, a must-have pattern. Into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a number 10 Mustad S82-3906B hook. I tie these in 8s, 10s and 12s. I'm going to use some hot orange uni thread in 8 -0. You can tie these with black heads, olive heads. I like to tie them with a little hot orange to create a few hot spot versions. So we're just going to secure that thread onto the hook shank. Cover the shank all the way down so it just about falls off into the bend about halfway between the point and the back of the smash down barb. And then we're going to come forward again. Make sure that's got a good firm thread base. Now we're ready to tie in the tail. Now the Pequod is named the Pequod because it contains four materials starting with P. Pheasant tail for the tail, peacock curl for the body, partridge for the hackle, and pin tail for its signature wing. So for the tail, we're going to give it a about a half shank length long group of pheasant tail, about six to eight fibers. And just secure those in place down the shank of the hook. Trim those off just back of the hook eye. And then we can get them easily secured in place. Strip those fibers together. That's all right. A little shorty one there. Fish won't mind, but Somehow as fly tires, that stuff always seems to bother us. There we go. The body is reinforced with a ribbing material. I'm going to use some fine or small UTC gold wire. Tie that in place along the near side of the shank. And secure that right down to the base of the tail. Put that in the material clip. Now we're going to form, or tie in rather, the body material, which is formed. I'm going to use some of the Spirit River UV2 enhanced um, peacock from a uh, peacock eye. I'm going to use some of the feathers right down here in the base. I've got about four strands I've stroked together. I'm going to trim the very tips out and tie them in right at the base of the tail. With the peacock curl tied in, I'm now going to form a dubbing loop to help reinforce the peacock curl. So I pulled off a length of tying thread. I'm going to form a loop and using the peacock curl as a guide, I'm going to form a loop that's about one inch shorter than the ends of the peacock curl. So I've found that point. I'm going to come back up, bring the tying thread back up to the hook shank. Secure it backwards to help close it and actually rotate the loop to the top side of the hook. And if you notice, right at the point where the loop contacts the hook shank, that loop is nice and tight. That's going to help hold our materials in place. We're going to carry that tying thread forward to the tie off point, which will be about two eye widths or so back from the hook eye. And take the dubbing loop now, pull it down going to pull the peacock curl down the left side of the loop and hold them together. I'm going to come in with my cowbird style dubbing tool, come through the loop, come down on top of the loop and the peacock curl, rotate the loop in and put the point, it's a little tricky, to get it in and trap the hurl between 
both strands of tying thread. With the peacock curl firmly trapped between the thread strands, I start twisting the dubbing loop tight. You don't want to go too tight at first because the tips of the peacock curl are brittle. So we want to get a couple of wraps in. I've twisted it a half a dozen times just to get that started. Maybe do two wraps around. And now you can start progressively twisting this dubbing loop tighter. Really make those fibers stand out. And then we're just going to wind this forward to form that signature peacock curl body. It's nice and bushy. Look at those beautiful fibers from that UV2 enhanced peacock curl. It's just gorgeous. Nice and bushy. And of course that's going to slim right down. But you those fibers are just going to come alive in the water column. And again, give it a final couple of twists. And carry that right up. Don't we want to crowd in the head if we can? And just tie that off. Tie that off. Come over with our scissors. Trim away the excess. Shorten the leash on our bobbin. Pull it back a bit. Keep that hook eye clear. And now we're just going to take our fine gold wire and for added reinforcement and a little bit of segmentation we're just going to wind that wire over the peacock curl come up tie that off a couple of wraps and over top a couple of wraps in front thumbnail on the tie off junction Pull and twist to break or helicopter the wire off. And then we have a nice durable body, nice sparse little tail. For the hackle, I've taken a partridge feather. I've stripped all the soft fibers off the base to leave the nice, well-barred fibers that the partridge is famous for. We're going to isolate the tip by just pinching the end of the feather to expose it. I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm just going to trim that tip section out, leaving that little triangle which will be our tie-in point. And we're just going to grab the partridge right by that tip, secure it in with a couple of firm thread wraps. And we're going to put a half a turn in to make sure it's positioned properly. I've tied in this partridge so the most prominently marked side of the feather is facing forward so it'll sweep back naturally. And then I'm just going to use the stem of the fiber, feather rather, as my hackle pliers and just make two to three turns. I want to overdress the fly. Just zigzag the tying thread through the fibers. Come in with my scissors points trimming on top. That ensures that the I don't accidentally trim the, the tying thread. Work that back in. And now what I like to do is just kind of divide to create a path for the wing that's got to go in. And it's going to equally disperse the fibers around. I'm going to tie these swept down and back. And then secure them in place. And the beauty of partridge and any if there's a few errant fibers on top that aren't playing. That's fine too. It's just going to add a, whoops, an element of sparseness that isn't going to hurt us. And the beauty of any soft hackle fibers, you can distribute them around and then just give it a pinch like this. Hold them back and give them a pinch and you see how that tucks and flows neatly back along the body. Now, for the wing, as I said, it was four materials. Pheasant tail for the tail, peacock for the body, partridge for the hackle, and the wing was pintail. But that's not always readily available so we're going to use a section of well barred teal flank and what I'm going to do is it's a, a technique back from Atlantic salmon flies I believe it's called DeFeo style so if you devout Atlantic salmon fly guys I said that wrong I apologize I'm going to tip, trim out the tip section of this teal flank and then I'm going to use the stem to gather and hold the rest so I'm just going to estimate how much I need for my wing by pulling this material together. I don't want to make it too much and there you can see the stem holds the fibers all neatly together. 
because they're not loose. I've just approximated, so this part of the feather here I'm not going to use, so I'm just going to trim that out of the way. The stem is still helping me to hold those feathers in place so I don't lose or drop any of them on the floor. Just going to give it a bit of a twist and a roll. We're just going to hold those and you can make the tips of the, the uh, wing extend to the tips of the tails. I kind of like them to go about halfway down. Again, the choice is yours. So they cup over. The natural curvature of the feathers cups over the body. Go around a couple of times to secure. Make sure that that's neatly on top of... I don't like how that wing has come together after all. And moisten them and hold them in place. So we'll reposition. That's the beauty of fly tying. If you don't like it, fix it. A couple of wraps, much better. like that a lot better. And then we're going to come in with our scissors. Carefully trim away the excess. Hold everything down, and now we're going to build up a neat, hot orange head. So you can be a little oversized with this, because we're going to use this as a trigger point for our fly. And again, we can stroke and hold everything in place. I've also used as a substitute, instead of the pintail or even the well-marked teal, uh, bronze mallard works quite well. And now all we're going to do is do the final finish on our head using our whip finisher to cover everything up, disengage, and then stroke everything back and give it that pinch to get everything trained. Everything looks nice and neat. And there all we have to do now is add a little bit of head cement, or in this case I'm just going to put a dab of brushable super glue right here. Let that flow in and you have the finished Pequod great little pattern. When this fly gets wet it can suggest forage fish um, because many of the small minnows that we imitate in the prairie provinces are dark in coloration, have a little bit of a mottled back. When this fly gets wet it also cups neatly over the back like this and does a very good job suggesting a scud. And of course as you can imagine with those four great materials in there it's just buggy and looks good to eat. So make sure you have a few of these in your fly box. A great little attractor pattern. A great cast and retrieve pattern, great to troll. And if you go to the Parklands region of Southwest Manitoba, as I do at least three times a year, you need these in your fly box. So hopefully you can add that to your box. It's a great little fly. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find lots of information, including fly fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, dates on my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. Please join the conversation on my Facebook page or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.